Hello everyone, I am Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 6 of numerical methods. So in today's class we are going to see the interpolating polynomial. So before starting the problems based on interpolating polynomial, first we will understand that what is actually this interpolating polynomial and then what are the uses of interpolating polynomial? Why we have to study interpolating polynomial? Fine. Interpolating polynomial is very useful in our day-to-day -day life. So we have actually the method of estimating values between known data points. So this is this is what I am talking about is same as interpolation. But here the process of interpolation is in the form of polynomial. Okay. Polynomial we all know, right? The term polynomial is what? If I write the general form of polynomial, so this I can write a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus so on plus a 0 x 0 right. So this, these are the coefficients a n a n minus 1 these are things are these are things are coefficients and x is the variable and the power is n n minus 1 and so on. This is the general form where all terms are present and two important properties of polynomial which we have discussed in differential equation playlist that n should be non-negative correct n should be non-negative and n should be non-fractional okay so this is the polynomial so the power of x should be non-negative and non-fractional some example if i'll give so it is 2x to the power 3 plus 7 uh, 7x anything right this is the polynomial okay now we are going to see these type of terms in our today's class. So this is polynomial. Okay, so when we will discuss the use of this interpolating polynomial in our day to day life, then if I will write one graph, okay, I'm just going to draw one graph. I'm just putting one, two, three, four, some values on my x axis. Fine. So these are few points which I have plotted in x, y axis. So what is happening here? This means that I know that what is the exact value at point 1, point 1 on my x axis. I know what is the exact value here which is present on my point 2, the exact value at point 3 on my x axis and so on. Fine. So these things we know which is given to me. So these are the true values. These are the exact values. Now, if I have to make the graph based on this information, so how I will do it? So here I'm facing some problem that if I have to make the graph based on these information, so which path I should follow? That means one easy method is what? I can join these two points uh, like with the straight line. Okay. Now I can join these two lines with this, this straight line. Again, using a straight line. Okay. And then using a straight line. So, so this way of joining the gap between the correct information is called the linear interpolation. But we can see that the linear interpolation is not very precise. Okay. So we will go for a little more informative graph. Okay. For that, the method which we should use is called as interpolating polynomial. Instead of just joining the dots with a straight line, if I'll be able to estimate the points in between these two points, so it will be much more informative. And this is possible by interpolating polynomial method. So finally, if I'll be using some functions of polynomial, then I then somewhat the graph will be like this. So somewhere the graph will not be exactly the straight line. Some nature we will be able to know that which nature I, this graph has. Okay. So even this is not exactly perfect, but still it has some mathematical sense. And in this method also we have few drawbacks that who knows that exact true value must be having some spikes here, must be having some dips here. So those things we, we really don't know, but, but still this method is much, much more precise than any other linear interpolating method. So now we will be seeing the questions based on interpolating polynomial. Here is the question, find the interpolating polynomial fx satisfying if 0 is 0, if 2 is 4, if 4 is 56, if 6 is 204, if it is 
496 and F10 is 980 and hence find F3, F5 and F7. That means I think now you must be getting some idea that what is happening here. Some values are given to me. These are the true values. These are the information which is given to me at these points. We have this much of information, but they are asking that find out the or maybe estimate the values at these points. Okay, so for that case, if I will be finding out the interpolating polynomial, fine. So that polynomial will be with respect to variable x and later I will be putting the values of x as 3, 5, 7 on that polynomial and then I will be able to estimate what value is present at f3, f5 and f7. So to proceed this interpolating polynomial, we are free to use Newton's forward interpolation method or Newton's backward interpolation method. Any method we will be using, we will be getting the correct answer. Here we are following the Newton's forward interpolation method. Fine. Now onwards the steps will be quite similar to what we have done till now. That means I am going to write down the Newton's forward difference table here and the difference table how to make these things we have discussed a lot. So I am not going to again discuss these things. What we are writing down here. So this is right. So f0 that means x value is 0, x0 is 0, x1 is 2 so on. And this is your y0. y0 is 0, y1 is 4. Uh, this is y2 is 56 and what is x0 and y0 and those things we have seen previous classes fine so here the same thing we are writing down fine no so y is function of x this is my x and this is function of x and only these two columns we have used using whatever data they have given till now we have not done anything we have just rewritten the data which is given in the in the question and afterwards, since I am following the forward difference table, now I am going to use the upside triangle and finding out the difference between 4 and 0, uh, 56 and 4 and so on. Fine. So these all differences we have written down. So again, I am going to find the difference between all these uh, values. Fine. And that will be one more column, delta 2y. Still the values are not same. So I'm going to again add one more column which will be delta 3y and finding out the difference between 96 and 48 and 144 and 96 and so on. Fine. Still okay. Now I'm seeing that all values are same. Now only one more column is needed where I have to show that all these values are 0. Correct. There is no difference between them. 80, 48 minus 48 is 0. 48 minus 48 is 0. Since all values are 0, either one entry will be there or all values are 0. Then that means I have to stop adding more column. Okay. So why I am doing this Newton forward table? Because I am interested in very first entries of all my delta y, delta 2y, delta 3y and delta 4y. Okay. So here the things we have got because I have to use these values in my Newton's forward interpolating formula. Delta 4 y naught was 0. So after that I don't have to use anything because afterwards everything will be 0. Fine. No. So these things we have got only I have to uh, find out is R. We know the formula of R also. R is x minus x naught by h. h we know that the difference between different instances of x. x naught is very first entry of x and x is what? x here in my this question of interpolating polynomial I will keep x as it is because they have not given any point that what is x for now right now to find out the interpolating polynomial I have to keep this x variable as it is then it will be one general polynomial okay so x will be as it is so r is x by 2 fine no and later on what I am going to do later on we will be putting the values of x as 3, 4, 7. So r is x by 2. And here is the fx. Correct? This is what? This 0 is my y0. y0 was 0. Fine. And then r is actually x by 2. So instead of r, I have written down x by 2. Then 4 is what? 4 is your delta y0 and so on. This is your r and then r minus 1. Fine. And then afterwards, this is your factorial 2. So this is 2 only. Then this is delta 2 y naught. We had got delta 2 y naught. It was 48. Fine. And now what does it mean? This is your r. This is your r minus 1. This is your r minus 2. And this is your factorial 3. Factorial 3 is 6. Fine. And the value 48 we have got from the difference table. 
afterwards what we have to do we just have to solve this fx once we have solved this this is only my answer fine so how we are solving it i'm just writing it here that zero i'm not writing this is right hand side only i'm writing down fine no this is right hand side i'm starting from here x by 2 into 4 so this is just 2x this is your 2x plus the numerator part is what x by 2 and x by 2 minus 1 i can write here 2 i'm taking here right this is your x minus 2 denominator is 2 into 48 correct plus again this is your x by 2 again i am writing down what here i am writing down x minus 2 okay again this is what 2 is here x minus 4 fine and then 48 okay that means what what does it mean this is 2x plus this is what x by 2 correct no x by 2 into x minus 2 divided by 2 and this 2 and 48 i am writing down here 24 okay this is your 24 plus this is your x by 2 then x minus 2 by 2 then x minus 4 by 2 and then divided by 6 also i had to write here fine no this divided by 6 so this 6 will give you 8 okay now then what next i have to do now i am writing down here 2x plus this 2 2 again will get cancelled and it will become your uh, 6 fine no so it is your x x minus 2 into 6 plus again this is your 2 2 4 8 this is now x and then x minus 2 x minus 4 fine now what i am doing 2x plus 6x is there correct no so this is my 6x into x will give you 6x square fine now 6x and 2 that means minus 12x plus x i am writing as it is now i am multiplying these two terms so it is your x square minus 4x minus 2x and then plus plus 8 okay now this is your 2x plus uh, 2x plus 6x square minus 12x plus uh, plus this x is getting multiplied in all terms okay now so this is minus 4x minus 2x will give you minus 6x and again one more x so minus 6x square and then plus 8x okay now can i simplify here so 6x square and minus 6x square and then minus 12x and this is plus 8x so if i'm writing it here so x cube so i'm starting with that uh, highest highest power so this is your x cube i have used x cube fine no this is what plus 8x plus 2x so 10x minus 12x that means minus 2x and all terms i have used so this is the polynomial okay so we have got here correct no we have got the same value so this is the general form of polynomial this is called the interpolating polynomial and they have asked that find the find the value f3 f5 and f7 so first thing we are done with find the interpolating polynomial we have found and now we are just going to put the values of x uh, as 3 uh, as 3 5 7 so what will be your f3 f3 will be 3 cube minus 2 into 3 because instead of x you are putting 3 so it is your how much 27 minus 6 so it will give you 21 similarly you will find f5 by putting value of x as 5 and then f7 okay so fine so we have got f3 f5 and f7 also will get now that if we substitute the given values of x which was 0 2 4 6 8 10 in the polynomial the values of fx coincide with the values of the data that means what that means what they are saying the polynomial is x cube minus 2x i know x cube what we have got x cube minus 2x okay now we can cross check that they have given us the value if 0 is 0 if 0 is 0 that means what this is your x correct no so x is 0 at x is 0 if 0 is what your y correct no so y is 0 so we'll see that whether we are also getting when we are putting the value of x 0 are we getting the value 0 yes we are getting the value 0 suppose we will cross check with f4 so i am substituting the value of x as 4 okay so this is your 4 cube minus 2 into 4 fine is your 64 minus 8 it will give you 56 fine 
those values you are going to get we can say that interpolating polynomial is if it is not 100% accurate but still it is going to be very precise in our data fine so this way we solve interpolating polynomial questions so if you find this class useful please like and subscribe my channel thank you